Hey y'all, welcome to Little Acre Homestead. My name is Rowan and today I am sharing our aspirational 2023 garden plan with you. As you can see, it is quite large. We have 14 four by eight beds planned and it's so big that I'm having trouble filming it. So I'm gonna take a picture of this for reference and go through the seeds that will be in each bed, but really quick, just so you know, here's what we're planning to do. We're gonna have tomatoes in these first five beds here peppers and winter squash here, peppers and spaghetti squash here, okra and cucumber, and then up top is beans, 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 space for our hen house, pepper and yellow squash, pepper and green squash, and finally pumpkin and watermelon. Let's get into what seeds we're growing. So in the first bed, we have yellow centiflor, cherry tomatoes, and ground cherries. One thing that I forgot to mention is that we have trellises going between the beds, uh, which you can see in the picture here. Um, these centiflor tomatoes are going to climb up the trellis. The ground cherries do not need a trellis, so they'll be planted on the outside. Next up in bed two is Amish paste tomatoes. This is going to be eight full plants of Amish paste. I know I said that I didn't really like Amish paste very much, but we are planning a lot of garden space. So I'm going to see about doing a full bed this year. Hopefully they produce really well and maybe I'll come around to liking the flavor more. In bed three and in its corresponding trellises is the Burpee Super Steak Hybrid Tomato, which I am super excited for. We lost a lot of these last year because of splitting and I'm hopeful that this year uh, they'll grow a little bit better. In bed four and on its trellises, we have the Large Red Cherry and the 4th of July Hybrid. The Large Red Cherry produced very well for us last year despite all of the problems that we were having with rain and with not being able to get out and do a lot of tending. And then this 4th of July Hybrid, I've heard really good things. It's supposed to be very tasty. And then in bed five, we've got the Everglades tomato, which will be on the uh, trellis nearer the tomato beds. And then we have the tomatillo, which does not need to be trellis, so it will not take up the trellis on that side. So in its place, we're going to do the Parisian pickling cucumber. Then in bed six, we have butternut squash and three different kinds of pepper. We're gonna do the poblano, the Carolina wonder, and the California wonder. Then between bed six and seven, we're doing the loofa gourd. I'm super excited to try this. I've never grown one before, and I really just wanna see if I can do it. This, I think, is gonna be a great way to sustainably grow things that we can use for dishcloths or scrubby little pads, things like that. Then in bed seven, we have spaghetti squash, serrano peppers, and then my three favorite kinds of jalapenos, which are the orange, lemon, and pumpkin spice jalapenos from Baker Creek. Very excited for this bed. Between beds seven and eight, we're doing the Boston and Chicago pickling cucumber, hoping they both turn out great, along with the Parisian pickling cucumber. I don't really know the difference between the three, but we'll see how they all do. Then in bed eight, we've got Alabama red okra, which as you know, I will grow every single year. And then we have this free seed from Baker Creek. I think it's pronounced bait alpha, um, as well as some hybrid slicing garden sweet cucumbers from Gurney's. Very excited to grow all of these. Bed nine is all about the red swan bush bean. We're gonna plant these with inoculants. I loved these last year. They did so well and they're so tasty. They do turn green when you cook them, but it's all good. Between beds nine and 10, we're doing the Chinese red noodle bean. And this new one, well new for us this year at least, this 1500 year old cave bean, Alex was super excited to try it. Um, so hopefully it does well. These both are trellising beans. This one here does have a low germination rate. So we'll probably try over planting it and then pruning. Um, but it produces these huge beans that are just super long. They're a great texture. They cook up really well. Highly recommend if you have the chance to try these. Then in bed 10, we have two different kinds of bush beans. Again, I love bush beans. So these are dragon tongues. These I would say are my favorite bean that we've ever grown. They are a very nice yellow color with these pretty purple um, striations, I suppose, on them. Very gorgeous. And then this one is new to us this year as well. This is the Blue Lake Bush Bean. Um, I'm really looking to uh, expand 
first of all, the types of beans that we grow, but also how much we harvest with the intent of canning it. Last year, I was only able to put up seven pints of canned green beans, and it turns out it's one of the vegetables that Alex eats all the time. So we need to pack our pantry with the vegetables he's going to eat. Really hoping the Blue Lake bush beans come through for us for that reason. Between beds 10 and 11, we are doing the Blahilda bean. This was one of our most prolific producers last year. It made absolutely stunning vines with all of these beautiful purple beans on it. They are so good. Again, they turn green when you cook them, but what can you do, right? These are delicious and I love to grow them. Highly recommend this variety. And then in bed 11, we have the Tenkoro soybean. We grew this two years ago. Phil really liked them. We use them as a side dish, um, kind of like an edamame type of situation. And then new for us this year is the sugar daddy pea. This can be trellised, it does not have to be. Um, so we're gonna see how these grow without being on a trellis this year. Then in bed 12, we've got the uh, summer squash. It is a Dixie yellow crookneck variety. We got this from Gurney's. And then we have the lemon drab pepper, new for us, the shishito pepper. And then also new to us, but one that we of course have eaten from the grocery store a lot is the Anaheim. The lemon drab was our best producing pepper last year. So I'm really looking forward to having these in the garden again, hoping that shishito and Anaheim do well for us too. Then bed 13 is our summer squash. We're doing the cash machine hybrid variety from Gurney's. This is the one that our old neighbor had great luck with. She said she didn't have any trouble with pests. So really hoping that we experience the same here um, because our squash has failed every year because of vine borers and I'm really over it. So hopefully these cash machine uh, squash do really well. And then for peppers, we're doing sugar rush peach and banana peppers. And then finally, in the last bed, number 14, we have the Bush Sugar Baby Watermelon and the New England Sugar Pie Pumpkin. We're gonna try growing these together. I did get a comment, thank you so much, on one of my last videos saying that that person had grown watermelon and pumpkin together and it did well for them. So hopefully we have the same experience. I will report back if we do or if we don't, we'll see how it goes. I'm very excited to try both of these in the garden this year. And then finally, for beds 12, 13, and 14, on the trellises between them, we are gonna grow the Old Homestead Kentucky Wander Pole Bean. This bean has always done very well for us, so we're excited to keep it in the garden again. Um, having you know four trellises worth of this bean, I'm hoping allows us to put up more in the pantry, maybe freeze some this year. We really like eating them fresh, but I really wanna get our pantry stacked with green beans so that we have one less thing that we have to buy at the grocery store. Well, this is indeed going to be a huge garden and it's a big undertaking. It's definitely aspirational because I don't know if we're going to be able to accomplish all that we've planned, but I think that we can do it and I'm really excited to try. And one thing that I didn't mention just because we haven't picked the seeds yet is that we are planning to um, intersperse or interplant uh, herbs, at least with our tomatoes, probably with some of our other varieties over here, planting herbs like basil or rosemary, mint, things like that with your tomatoes and other plants can help keep pests away. Garlic, for example, you can interplant with brassicas and that will help keep cabbage worms away. So we're going to be doing that in our green stocks as well. Now on this part, I don't know how soon we're going to be able to get our hen house built, but I'm super excited to have our little egg laying ladies join our family and come live on the homestead with us. Stick around to see if we can even accomplish that this year and how much of our garden we can even get in the ground. Thank you so much for stopping by Little Acre Homestead and for subscribing, and I'll see you again very soon.